Hello everyone, my name is Zach and welcome to my channel. Now amongst other things I am a reenactor and a jouster and one of the highlights of my year is usually to go to the battlefield at Bosworth and to reenact the Battle of Bosworth. Now this is right at the end of the period that I reenact which is the late 15th century and my group Destria have had the honour over the past few years to represent um, the King Richard and his cavalry and also um, Henry VII um, as he became at the end of the battle. Now uh, why am I talking about this? Well on the 22nd of August which is the day that this is going live that is the anniversary of the battle as it happened and that would have been the day that we would be reenacting that battle. Unfortunately due to Covid we are not going to be able to do that this year but I thought it would be a nice opportunity to share some thoughts that we have had and that we have discussed as a group because we love to talk about this stuff even when we're not doing it. So Richard III was discovered under a car park not very long ago and this was an amazing opportunity for the historical community to find out more about those last few moments of Richard's life. You see we know from the accounts of the time that he died in battle. We know that he started the battle on horse, that he charged Henry VII, that he fought valiantly and then ended up dying while fighting on foot at the bottom of the hill. Now, finding Richard's remains was absolutely extraordinary for our community, for the historical community at large and the University of Leicester were able to do some absolutely amazing work with those bones because his skeleton showed so many injuries that they were able to put together some idea of what might have actually killed him. One of the puzzles that they came up with though was one of the wounds and it was in particular the wound on his pelvis. The question that they had was how could Richard have received the wound to his pelvis? You see it seemed to be coming from a strange angle, one that would go upwards into the pelvis and it fractured one of the pelvis bones. The question was quite obviously if someone is wearing 15th century plate armour how are they going to receive such a wound? The answer that they came up with was uh, we know that after the battle Richard was draped over a horse and maybe someone as a way of humiliating him after his death stabbed him um, in the bottom as he was um, led away from the battlefield on the back of a horse. Now reading about this wound and looking up um, the information that they had on it actually made me think about something to do with 15th century armour and I've discussed this with the other members of Destria and in particular our commentator Rupert has um, come to the same conclusion which is really great when um, when you find other people coming to the same conclusion as you independently that can be a really good sign that maybe you're onto something so I wanted to share that with you now. Now if Richard's fighting on horseback then it's likely he's wearing something similar to Italian armour. Italian armour has a reasonably short fold which comes down to just the top of the pelvis and then underneath you would be wearing some male, probably a male skirt, possibly male um, breeches, but if he's riding it's more likely to have been a male skirt. And then he also has extra protection in the form of a medieval war saddle, which comes up the back, it cradles the buttocks and provides extra protection from behind. Now as Richard thundered down the hill, um, couching his lance ready for the charge he would have been completely protected. No part of him would have been open to any attack. You would have had to get through the plate armour 
in order to get to Richard's body. However, once he has finished the charge and is now engaging in a melee, things start to change. Now I'm going to show a picture of the Battle of San Romano, which is an amazing painting that shows cavalrymen in Italian style armour fighting each other in different ways. And you can actually see something of what I'm talking about in that picture. A cavalryman engaging another cavalryman sometimes needs to stand up out of the saddle. This will lift, obviously, the top of their fold, the bottom of their fold, away from the top of the saddle and can provide a gap that is only protected by mail. You can't have plates over that part of the buttock. If he is standing far enough and reaching far enough, then that would have provided a perfect opportunity for an infantryman to strike up at his buttocks. This could well have pierced the male armour, but actually as it's coming from below and he's wearing a male skirt, it might have even been able to slide underneath the male skirt. It's not necessary for that to have happened because we know that mail can be pierced with a um, strong enough blow, but that is a possibility. And such a wound will have made it extremely painful and possibly even impossible for Richard to continue fighting on horseback. This may well be, if this is the first wound he suffers, this may well be the reason why he ended up fighting on foot at the bottom of the hill. Now remember, he has his entire cavalry with him, his bodyguard. If he does the charge and stays at the bottom of the hill because his horse is killed, then his cavalry bodyguard would have been able to give him another horse. We know knights are able to mount from foot. We see it all the time in 15th century and in fact just medieval pictures. And horses are a lot shorter generally than most of the horses that, uh, that we see nowadays. He would have been able to remount a different horse and ride back up the hill. We know that he doesn't do that. So if he is badly wounded in a way that means he cannot ride a horse, that explains why he's going to try and fight his way out on foot, which is something that all of the records agree he did. He stood, it, um, he fought on foot until he was surrounded and killed. Now, like I said, Rupert has uh, put a lot of thought into all of these wounds and how they might have worked together, bearing in mind the armour that a 15th century knight would have worn and bearing in mind what we know from the other sources of the period. If that is something that would interest you then do leave a like or a comment uh, and I will see whether or not I can get a conversation with Rupert and we can put up a video about that. But I just wanted to share this with you because I thought actually maybe that wound that we thought was the last one might actually be the entire reason why he ended up dying. Even if he continued fighting after receiving it, if it meant that he couldn't escape well, then that would be why he ended up dying at the bottom of that hill. Thanks very much for listening. Um, do leave a comment, do leave a like, share and subscribe. I'm doing loads of different videos at the moment. I'm doing some about armour, some about reenacting and others about history in the 15th century. So uh, it would be great to hear from you and I'll hopefully see you in a future video. Bye-bye.